My name is Norma Stanley and welcome to Disability World. being a part of Disability World today. We are excited about introducing a young man who is a rising star in the animation, cartoon animation space. He has created a cartoon called Team Supreme, which is a cartoon that is about children with disabilities who are also superheroes. I love the concept. I love what he's been doing. I've kind of been following him on social media for the last couple of years to see how he's progressed and he is catching fire with what he's done and what his concept is all about. People are loving what he's doing. I want to just share his story with you. So thank you for joining and um, check out the conversation I had with Joshua Leonard. Thank you for being a part of our show, Mr. Joshua Leonard of Leonard Studios. I just really want you to share just everything about what you've been doing. Like I said, I've been following you for a while now, and I just, you know, I am just really, really impressed with all that you're doing and how your career is really exploding because of your, your vision and what you've been doing about the disability communities. Tell us about, first of all, who is Joshua Leonard and, and how you became inspired to create Team Supreme? Yes, ma'am. Well, Joshua Leonard is a military brat. I was born in Miami, Florida. Um, you know, I, I'm the youngest of two older brothers. Uh, one of my older brothers just passed last year from pneumonia. And um, he's the one that actually taught me how to draw when I was in kindergarten. So he taught me how to draw Garfield when I was really young. And once I learned how to draw Garfield, like I love, didn't put the pencil down after that. So it was really good. Uh, you know, that was the start of my art career. Um, and my older brother, he's, he, he had really good penmanship, like beautiful handwriting. That's pretty much what he's, you know, he can draw, but not like me. But uh, his handwriting was always like really beautiful, beautiful penmanship. But uh, we were all athletes growing up. You know, I was, I was a big time athlete, played football, baseball, basketball, track. Got recruited in football, baseball, track. Um, but still never stopped drawing or anything like that. I always loved art and I always wanted to have that. Um, if if I was, if something was to happen while I play sports, I wanted art to be like a little um, safety net for me. And it, and it did happen because my senior year of high school, I hyperextended my knee. And, um, but everything happened for a reason. I had art scholarships as well. So I ended up going to uh, up a school in Biloxi, Mississippi called William Carey College. I was a graphic design student, which I love graphic design as well. Um, so I did that for two years and then Hurricane Katrina came and just completely wiped the school out because I was living in the uh, in the dorms on the beach at the school. And wow. uh, when, I, when I got evacuated to Atlanta during Katrina, I wanted to go to uh, the Art Institute, but I, I didn't get in. I didn't get in because I had too much debt and then stuff didn't transfer over at the time. But when I went to the Art Institute to try to get in this time, I got accepted, got a scholarship. So everything started lining up like it was supposed to. Uh, graduated 2018 with a 4.0. I was the commencement speaker um, alongside of uh, Rep. John Lewis. You know, rest in peace to John Lewis. Wow. Um, yeah, it's been a blessing. Uh, you know, I'm currently at Netflix, which is awesome. I do freelance work. Uh -huh. You know, for those of you who don't know, I, I do freelance character design for Nickelodeon, Netflix, Disney, whoever needs, you know, uh, characters developed. So that's okay. where I'm at now. That's awesome. I mean, uh -huh. and, and considering what you have gone through and what we're able to overcome as a result of the Hurricane Katrina situation, I understand from, you know, just doing some research that you were, you know, kind of homeless for a minute. You know, so yes, you I was homeless. Wow. Yeah, and I was homeless for a while. For a while? Yeah, mm -hmm. a while. A while. So I was bouncing from 
you know, I have friends that I can kind of bounce around to and That's sleep weird. on their couch and stuff like that. But uh, I didn't have family in Biloxi, Mississippi. I don't have family in Atlanta. My family is in Texas. So okay. um, I could have, I mean, I could have went to San Antonio where my, my parents actually live, but my yeah. daughter was, my daughter was in, you know, Biloxi, Mississippi. So I just kind of stayed right. and, uh, and did that thing there. But uh, one thing I forgot to mention while I was a student at the Art Institute, I believe, uh, 2017, maybe I was in two car accidents, and I, I don't oh think I've ever, I don't think I've ever spoke on this in any of my interviews. Uh, yeah, I got in two car accidents back to back, back to back days, um, and that's when I was working at Home Depot, getting off at midnight. I was out of red light, and I just got off at about 12:15 um, in the morning, and uh, I was just at a red light, and a speeding car just ran up the back of my car, totaled it. So, um, were you hurt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to, I had to get five epidurals. I had to get five epidurals, um, and then that next day, my coworker came to pick me up. My car was total, so I had to go get my uh, like medication and stuff like that. And we got in a, another car so that he was driving, and it we got totaled again. So, my goodness, I had to still go to school and do all this stuff at the same time. Work full time, go to school full time. Bad back. It's way better now. Um, like I said, five epidurals later. So um, wow. it was a lot going on at that time. <laughs> it sounds like a very determined young man. And yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> tenacious. For sure. Yeah, definitely tenacious. And that's a quality that you have to have just in life in general. But if, definitely if you're trying to make something happen um, with your life like you're trying to do, we're going to take a quick break and I am going to come right back. Let's hear it for the show you've been waiting for. Nella Joy Nation. Nella Joy Nation radio show and podcast has a new look this year. Each show will feature guests from the entertainment and lifestyle arenas and more from around the globe, highlighting people making positive impact in their communities and the industries they represent. So stay tuned if you can handle this. Nella Joy Nation, positively entertaining. And we're talking with Mr. Joshua Leonard about his creation, Team Supreme, which is a comic, an animated comic strip, and hopefully developing into an actual television cartoon featuring children with disabilities. Now, go ahead and tell us about how you were inspired to do that and, and what, is it, what it's all about. Yeah, so Team Supreme is actually going to be an animated cartoon. So uh, mm -hmm. the, the comics and the books will come a little later, but right now okay. my team and I, we are currently working and developing a cartoon series. So um, Team Supreme is about a group of kids who were born with a disability or they have a disability or a special need, but they also, that's that disability, what uh, society deems as a disability will be their superpower. Like, um, my main character's name is Zeke, and that's that's kind of him back there with the high top face. So he's on the autism spectrum. Uh -huh. um, so where society looks at that as being different, I see it as being a super a superhero because I have seen what people on the autism spectrum are capable of. Um, Team Supreme came about for me around 2009, and the the way I came up with it is because. The animation industry was less than, uh, I think it was like less than 3% of uh, people of color in the industry, which was crazy low to me and really a disrespectful number. But I was looking at that and I was thinking to myself, like, not only are they not hiring people of color, you know, just different people. I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't see uh, people with disabilities in cartoons, television, in Hollywood in general enough. Exactly. So that was that was me kind of rounding all my bases. And, you know, I, I really wanted to, OK, if they're not going to show these characters, I'm going to show all of them. You know, I'm going to show this type of character. I want to normalize being different. I want to show what this looks like on camera and just put them in the forefront. So that's where Team Supreme came from. Um, I started doing a bunch of research and uh, I really just started falling in love with all of this information that I was reading about these disabilities and 
just hearing about certain things is crazy to me. And I've never known um, like things I've never known about. Like if somebody is, is blind, they're hearing stuff gets enhanced, which is amazing to hear. And um, it's, it's really a beautiful thing. So I really wanted to, my team and I, um, you know, it's me, Lena Wade from Hillman grad, Jason Weaver, uh, you know, Rishi. I have a, my writer is also deaf. Her name is Giselle. So um, we really wanted to capture the true essence of these, uh, these disabilities. So it's, I, I kind of tell people it'll be more, it'll be like Marvel or DC comics, uh, Marvel comics, but this is the Team Supreme universe where all of the superheroes will have disabilities. All the villains will have disabilities, you know, wow. most of them, you know, that way you can, you can really see the good side of autism or the bad side, you know, maybe we'll see how they chose to go that route. Um, but all of my characters, you know, I have a uh, character who's deaf. I have mm -hmm. a character who's blind. Uh, I have a character with spina bifida. Um, let me see. We, we, yeah, here's, here's wow. the kind of teen version. Uh, uh -huh. so that's Lee. Lee is blind. This is Zeke, my main character. Uh -huh. This is Thumper. Thumper is deaf, so he'll have a cochlear implant. Okay. Um, that's Dr. Jackson right here. That's the big dude in the back. And he's uh -huh. actually based on my best friend who was, uh, who died in 2008. So that's kind of me just oh. keeping his name alive. Right. Um, that's mech right there with spina bifida. And originally I gave uh, um, Sweet Pea, that's his sister. Mm -hmm. Originally I gave her sickle cell, but um, we decided to not give her a disability at all just to show the dynamic between two relatives, one with and one without. That way right. you can kind of use that as a teaching device in the, uh, in the cartoon as well. So right. not only will the cartoon be dope, like it's going to be a real teaching service as well. So, and a lot of people are wondering, like, uh, you know, I gave Zeke a high top fade. The mm -hmm. only reason I did that is because some people who are uh, on the autism spectrum have a really hard time getting haircuts. Mm -hmm. So they don't like the vibrations. They don't like the sounds. So that's me. Now we can have an episode where we show how difficult it is for. Yeah, I lived uh, in that area. Absolutely. And each episode will be like that. Maybe one day we'll, We'll talk about how, you know, we'll show what it's like being in a wheelchair or how difficult it is without ramps going down exactly. you know, like that. The accessibility so, um, aspect. Exactly. That's awesome. So you'll be able to teach people what life is like from exactly. all aspects of life, showing through these characters. Yes, ma'am. As children and adults. Yep. Right. Right. Who have different abilities, whatever those abilities are, whatever the disabilities are. You know their their abilities will compensate and 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 show how they can still make things happen exactly. and succeed in their individual lives. That's, that's it. Awesome. Yeah, it's, and, and that's it's it's really easy. Um, I'm surprised it hadn't been done yet, but at the <laughs> same time, I feel like I was put here to make this specific show. That's your uh, assignment. So yeah. yeah, this is this is my baby right here. But I do think um, a show like this is needed because I think Hollywood. A lot of people are afraid of what they don't understand. So I think they hear the word disability and they run from it, you know. So um, with me, I, I, I gravitate towards it. I love learning things. Um, I love everybody anyway. I've never won. I've never been one to, you know, shy away or, or put stick my nose up to somebody who looks different. So that's what my team and I are planning to do with Team Supreme. And that's just normalize being different. Right. And that's a beautiful thing. And, and that's so much that is so needed in our society today, because so many people are, you know, they're, they're afraid of what they don't know and what they don't yeah, understand. Right. right. And, and that's culturally, that's racially, you know, and if people would just take that time to try to understand and be empathetic, put themselves in somebody else's shoes right. so that they can see what that person may be going through and maybe not be so you know, just deciding that they don't like somebody or, you know, they don't want to be around somebody or they, you know, decide they want to bully somebody before knowing yeah. what those people are dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, it, it, life would be so much easier. I know my daughter has cerebral palsy and so she, um, mm. she doesn't talk. She only says a few words mm. and, um, you know, she's in a wheelchair 
and you know, when she was growing up, she's an, she's an adult now, and she's she's someone who she models. She's a fashion model. Um, you know, she wasn't able to fully express herself verbally, but she loves clothes. She loves dressing up. She loves yeah. music. And even though she can't verbally sing, she actually, you know, she has a wonderful. She has a soprano voice. So she she right. can keep a tune. She just can't yeah. say the words. And so with me as a singer, she's always, you know, following me around and it's part of my rehearsals and, you know, anything having to do with music, she's right there because she no, loves yeah. it. And music is a big part of, of our lives and it's, right. it's definitely very therapeutic um, for a lot of people with disabilities, yeah. um, people in general, but definitely people with disabilities. So yeah. you know, I'm, I'm excited about what you're doing from an artistic standpoint because, I mean, I think that's something that, you might, is that something you can train other young people to do, what you're doing there? To draw? To draw, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I okay. could definitely do that. Um, but real quick, I just wanted to piggyback off of what you were saying with the music. I, I used to work with a uh, a brother at uh, Home Depot, and okay. he is, he's is deaf. And um, he would come to work. I remember he's a real, real funny guy. And I always used to tell him, like, man, you're the quietest one in the room, but he's, like, the loud, like, funny. So you always, uh -huh. even though he wouldn't say anything, he was hilarious. And uh, he would come to, he would drive to work in a truck and he always had like rap music blaring loud. Uh -huh. And I was asking him and I'm like, how can you, how can you hear the music? And he said he can feel the vibrations of the beat. So it's stuff like that is, is it's amazing. amazing. Like I would have never really thought is. about that. So when I was doing research of that and, and kind of learning more about that stuff, I was like, man, this is... This is crazy. The human body is amazing what it can it do. It really is. You know, so um, that's kind of where I tell people, if I wasn't an artist, I probably would have been a doctor just to learn more and more about these, uh, these, these, the, you know, the, the human, the human being right. is, is amazing to me, so. Yeah, I mean, God knew what he was doing, <laughs> I, I tell you. And he also, you know, however he did, did what he did, he made it so that, you know, one thing, like you said, Compensates for the other. Like people who may be visually impaired, they, they have a heightened sense of hearing. Right. And there's so many different, there's so many different levels of, of, of the capabilities. And that's why we can't, you know, assume that just because someone has a disability, that they are capable of doing other things at an amazingly, you know, excellent level. Absolutely. And uh, that's one of the things that through the work that, that I try to do is to help share who's out here who's doing some amazing things that people just need to know about. And, and that's what I yeah. want to be able to do with Disability World TV. And I, you know, when I saw your, you know, the stuff that I saw on, on social media and, you know, I said, this is so cool. I've got to talk to this guy, you Thank know, because I love what you're doing. And I'm just excited about, you know, seeing your, your development and how people are recognizing your gifts and talents and, and the message you're trying to bring. It's so important. Absolutely. So, Thank you. So what does what does 2021 look like for you? I mean, um, you said you're getting ready to um, are you working on your uh, your development of the production of the potential cartoon? Um, any any interest yet from studios? Are they showing some interest in some studios and picking up this stuff or looking at it at least? Yeah, so a lot of people don't know. I still work full time with Home Depot. So it's it's okay. a grind for me, like. You know, everybody <laughs> sees it. they see the Netflix or they see the Nickelodeon. Those are freelance jobs. So I'm not getting right. hired full time. Like this is a, right. these are contract. These are contract jobs. So I still have to work a full time, and, and you know, it's just remaining humble. So uh, like today, like I was telling you, I just got off, um, mm -hmm. and then I'm working with other clients on other shows and and things like that. But um, 2021. Like right now, Team Supreme and my team and I are trying to get the cartoon funded. Like we've mm -hmm. already pitched, we pitched to almost all of the big major studios, but they all kind of passed on it because uh, it was during COVID when I went, you know, I flew out there to LA with, with my team and um, like it was right at the beginning of COVID. So studios weren't really, I don't think they were really too worried about pitches at the time. It was, it was a stressful time uh, everywhere. Yeah. You know, yeah. but um, still, we still have places that are still interested and, Good. you know, investors are definitely interested. And then they kind of, certain ones, they love it and then they kind of pull out. Like I said, everybody, studios 
are not used to a cartoon like this. I think I they fear, they have fear of it. That's why Disney hadn't done it. Um, like this, they, it's a, it's sensitive topics like this. I you know. can either do it right or you can do it wrong. I'm going to do it right. That's why I'm so confident about it. And I'm not worried about any, uh, you know, I don't have any fear of what to happen. I know this was, this is my cartoon. I, I was put here to make this cartoon. Um, but that's that's pretty much all I'm doing right now. Hopefully, we'll we'll get some investors that want to uh, make it happen. Um, so you, you know, I have no problem putting it on YouTube or anything like that. I'm I just want to get the content out there. Um, I may I may start on like a book or a comic. I want to get some type of content out there for uh, kids and the people. Um, I'm just I'm just doing. I'm I'm always gonna do like character design work for people. I exactly. talk to. I talked to uh, some people from Nickelodeon yesterday, so they they let me know that as soon as they have another show available where they need something, and that's the good thing about it. They always come back and get me for projects. Um, right. So it's it's a blessing, but I'm just gonna do my part over here, kind of stay behind the scenes, <laughs> and uh, continue to do the groundwork, continue to do the research, do interviews, because um, I'm still branding. This is all part of branding. That's why I love doing these interviews. Nice. So people can know what Team Supreme is about, you know, Absolutely. Um, and not just me, but it is it is good because I am a, a black creator, a black animator, a black character designer in the industry, which is very rare. So nice. um, I'm, I'm very grateful for all the opportunities given to me. Next chapter, the new CD by independent recording artist Nella Joy is an inspirational musical fusion of R&B, soul, jazz, and hip-hop featuring emotive songs with powerful messages like M.I.A. and Can You Handle This? Purchase Nella Joy next chapter on CD Baby, iTunes, Amazon Music, or wherever you download your favorite CDs. And we're back here with Mr. Joshua Leonard of Leonard Studios, who is sharing some amazing information about the work that he does as an animator and um, a developer of, of cartoons and, and in particular Team Supreme, which is a, a cartoon about children with disabilities who are also superheroes. And I just love the concept. I love what he's doing and just wanted to make sure people knew about it and wanted to share it here on Disability World. So you were saying that 2021 is looking pretty good and, you know, people are looking at some of your work and hopefully, you know, you will get some investors to invest and, and take this to the next level. And we're going to yes. believe that that's going to happen for you um, yes. as your stock continues to rise. So if people wanted to get in touch with you, what's the best way they could reach you in terms of, you know, sharing your story and and you know if they needed to touch base with you just to just to find out how you can help speaking of that you do a lot of stuff um in the community you do some things in the community from what i understand could you share a little bit about that before we find out where people can reach you yeah um i mean i've, I've done a couple of speaking engagements with uh mm -hmm. some, some disability uh mentoring days uh i speak to a lot of students you know schools um, I spoke with Novartis. I was a, I was the guest speaker at Novartis oh. about two years ago. Novartis uh -huh. is one of the biggest uh, pharmaceutical companies in yes. the world. So I did their uh, disability mentoring day. Had a blast, man. A lot of I think it was a hundred kids. I mean, we had a blast up there, man. It was it was a lot of fun. It was in New Jersey. So um, I have the Joshua Leonard Foundation that I'm working towards, okay. and, and I'll be able to do a lot with. Uh, the, the disabled community um, and, and kind of plan events and just do a lot of things to give back. So okay. super excited well, I, about it. I want to get you in touch with the organization that I'm a part of, um, Showability, yeah. which is geared towards performing mm -hmm. artists with disabilities and, you know, anybody in the in artistic realm, um, sure. Sure. as well as, you know, of course, Respectability, which is another organization. They do a lot of things with people in Hollywood. Um, and so, and, and the music industry. So, you know, there's going to be, I think there's going to be a lot of ways and, and opportunities for you to share your story and share your, your gifting and, and what you've created and 
you know, like I said, I, I believe that this is your time <laughs> for to, to rise up. I'm real excited about it. And, and um, you know, anything I can do to be of assistance, please let me know. And um, I just was so glad to, to, you know, I know that you're a busy man and trying to make sure that I, I was able to get to talk to you because, you know, I just, like I said, I've been an, a big fan <laughs> for a couple of years. So I, I appreciate you taking the time to be a part of, of um, our show Disability World today. Thank you. Absolutely, and I appreciate if there's, you. Do you have a website you wanna share with people so that they can um, look you up and just get some information about you? Absolutely, I have uh, leonardstudios.com and that's L-E-O-N-A-R-D-S-T-U-D-I-O-S.com. And from there, you can pretty much find me on all of the rest of the social media sites. And um, right. one more, I also have uh -huh. joshualeonardart.com. So joshualeonardart.com and leonardstudios.com. So the joshualeonardart.com, that's my portfolio. If, if people want to look at it and see my artwork and see uh, clients on this stuff for Leonard Studios is actually my company. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for, again, being on Disability World today. I look forward to, you know, us having another conversation very soon and learning more about, you know, where you are at that time, because I'm sure it's going to be at a whole nother level. So thank you again for being a part of Disability World today. Thank you, ma'am. I Talk appreciate the opportunity. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Here's my motivational moment for today. You know, we're living in a time when there's a lot of selfishness, a lot of um, you know, narcissism, a lot of people not caring enough about each other. And, um, you know, it's just not the way it should be. And it brings to mind a quote um, by, by C.S. Lewis that I wanna share with you. And it says, humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. And, you know, we have to, you know, really, even though we love ourselves, you definitely want to do that, but you also want to love other people and, you know, think about them more than we do. We, we just need to do that. Especially those of us in the disability community, um, we don't get the kind of attention that we should in terms of being included in so many things that we should be included in and um, we just need to to love ourselves more as a society and um, think less about ourselves and more about others and that's really what that comes from having more compassion more love and more humility that's my motivational moment for today thank you for being a part of disability world today we you know we just love what joshua leonard is doing and, you know, we wish him all the best, much success in, in his future. I know there's going to be nothing but great things happening as he moves forward. So we just thank him for taking the time to have a conversation with us on Disability World today. And stay tuned for some great new shows, some informative, inspirational, and fun shows that we're going to be bringing to audiences of Disability World coming soon. So we look forward to seeing you then. Talk to you then. Have a best one. Bye-bye.